<laughs> What's going on guys? Mike Sherman here from Chinatown Market. I'm the founder and creative director. I'm gonna take you guys through how to take an idea from concept to final creation. So let's go. You know, it's kind of ironic that I'm doing design theory today. In my office, I have a framed test of me getting a nice C minus on my test. You know, in a sense, that's why you guys don't need to just get a good grade to be a good designer. In reality, for me, it was all about diving in, go for it, learn on the go. You got YouTube, you got Chinatown Market. We're here to teach you. Let's go. To get started, what are you gonna need? Honestly, you don't need all this stuff. You can just use a nice pen and paper. Sharpie, my favorite. But if you're trying to get a little technical with it, you can use a nice little Wacom pen and an Intuos 4 Wacom tablet. Only $4.99 off Amazon.com. That was really fast talking. I'm gonna hit my good old friend uh, Google. Um, all right, cool. Nothing crazy in my top bar. Um, <laughs> what you got? <laughs> just had to make sure there, you know? I guess I could kind of start with things like uh, gas station logos, stuff like that. You know what, I was always a Hess fan as a kid. I know you, young, you youngins don't know what the hell Hess is. So cool, as we go through this, even like as I see this, you know, the Hess logo, I get inspired by the Speedway one. Like obviously we're gonna semi riff off of the Speedway thing, but the idea here is more about the art style. You're looking at all of these different lines, how you're creating the actual language of speed. You know, this SO logo, sure it's great, but it could also be Wonder Bread. That story has to be evident from the minute you look at it. So Zephyr, it's like this idea of going to one point, it's moving forward. You know, you got Leonard, this is an involving thing. So the idea of gas going into a tank, you know, you got this pure thing here, it feels like a tire or something that's like that. You know, at the end of the day, we all grew up with these things that we know and love but it's very hard to see something and feel that same thing that you felt as a kid. But it happens every day through design, through advertising, and through product. Let's kind of jump in, you know? I really like this Speedway logo. It's definitely one of my favorite ones. And then we can kind of like, you know, begin to understand how I go after this in a design perspective. And really for us here, it's like, how do we get this effect? You know, we want to be able to tell this story, but we don't want to lose, you know, the letter form. So, you know, with Chinatown Market, obviously our main letter is a C. You know, here, how do I actually get this thing to look like this S? So I'm gonna take this bar of the S, but I'm actually gonna just create a little grid, which if you can imagine, this grid will eventually erase away the full thing. And then we're coming in here and I'm essentially just creating the speed grid that we're gonna inlay the C to. Whatever is black in your shape, will essentially still be there in the sea and anything that's not there is gonna disappear. So when you break into the actual graphic, you can see now I'm padding it cleanly between these things. You gotta watch these little details because all of it affects how the logo looks. I actually have to now make the version of this S that went to this level. And that spacing again needs to be really on point. So you should be using your tools to actually check that spacing once you're done. You're gonna click all of them, drag them over that S, and see, they're all aligning to these areas, and you've now created that grid. I can bring that back over here to the C, and then let's go ahead, and I'm gonna create another one of those bars like we had before. I'm gonna Command-8 to make it a compound path, select the whole thing, make a clipping mask, and then here we are. At this point now, I wanna make sure that my stuff is aligning. As we go through, we're actually like moving these all down to hit this end line. You'll see little errors like this that like I would never have visually seen and I have to be able to check it, you know, because all those little details contribute to something not looking right, not communicating what it should be. So that one looks really good. We're almost there. I'm gonna take this guy and sometimes you can actually do little chink cones. So I'm gonna put a little stroke on this guy. We're gonna make it white and out of that, we get a way thinner stroke here. I use my A select tool to click the white. That's where you can see the white's there. I go select, same, fill color. That selects all of the white in that selection. I delete it, it's gone. Bring back my selection, and I'm gonna have to do the same thing that we did before, guys. So I'm gonna have to actually come here, take this, and move it down to hit you know, these lines. And you just go down the line and hit that on each one. At the end of everything I do, I spend more time checking my work than I do of the creation of it. S, C, pretty damn close. We're gonna go back into here. I'm gonna go into throw in Chinatown on here. 
And then this is where I can actually start messing with blanks and understand what it looks like. So I'll pop into my handy dandy blank folder, which I think everyone should kind of amass a kind of blank folder of stuff so that you can imagine what it looks like in real life. You have your final C, we're bringing it together with the Pathfinder to make one final shape. Pop over to the shirt, we wanna kinda of see what that looks like on here. I wanna make this guy red, cause that's usually what the icon would be. And then there you go. So, you know, that's just one iteration. But then for me, I like to kinda of just mess around and play off on the side. It's always fun to kinda of mess with these ideas of like weird placements and like offset concepts. You know, cause the more weird you get with your placements, it allows you to have fun with it and see different things. All right, cool, we got this racing kind of concept. So I'm gonna do like a, you know, just like a 34 for a racing number. And then you're kind of already getting into this realm of racing. I can put some checkers in there. I might stretch these guys and make them look a little wonky, throw a little curved edge on them. And then let's bring that guy in. Right here, taking the initial design theory of I just wanna take some gas station, car logo kind of thing. And then you were able to take that idea, flesh it out, understand how to communicate that graphic into something that will actually move and tell that story. You go from the most simple, inspo, creation, simple layout, start playing with it, and then you get to your storytelling. Because now when I look at this graphic, I think racing. You know, I think like, uh, I mean, I don't know, a bunch of dudes shotgunning beers. Just have some fun with it. Don't be afraid to kind of test these things. Like, you can see the checkers added an element that kind of took it over the top. All of these little steps are things that are gonna allow the consumer to instantly identify. And that's what we're trying to do here. It's always about storytelling. All right, guys, so now's the time. We're taking the design from the computer and taking it from concept to actual final creation. Let's go. Look at this, guys. We took a graphic from concept to creation in less than 30 minutes. All of this is hand-done blocking, so this is actually done on a vinyl cutter. That's why when we talk about things in Illustrator, like layers and getting things to stack on top of each other, it's very important. It's almost like looking at this as a canvas and how can we balance out all the information together. All right, guys. You hung, you learned, we did some stuff, and we made something. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, share, and subscribe, and make sure to tune into next week's episode. You never know what you're gonna learn. Thank you guys so much. See you next week.